What's going on, everybody? Welcome to NetTech Explained. Since I posted my last video on attacking generative AI systems, I've been getting a lot of requests to do another video on AI red teaming. Now, full disclosure, I am not an expert on AI red teaming. But with DEF CON right around the corner, we are going to be hosting our second version of the generative red team event at the AI Village this year. So if you're going to be at DEF CON, come and check us out. In the meantime, I figured that this would be a good opportunity to go over some of my favorite resources to learn about AI red teaming and some things that I think you might be interested in if you want to learn more about AI red teaming and hacking machine learning systems. So let's get started. Okay, so the first resource that I would point you to is actually Kaggle.com. Uh, what we have done is every year we've hosted a AI CTF at the AI Village. It's been hosted on Kaggle. So this one is actually from DEF CON 31, which is the one that we hosted last year. If you have never been on Kaggle before, Kaggle is a data science platform where people can share code and data sets. So in this case, we've shared our Capture the Flag data set and people have decided to share some of their code that they use to explore the data and get some of the answers. So this first page is actually gonna be just the overview as far as what the competition is about, uh, the description and evaluation, some of the formats that we expect the flags to be submitted in. This second tab is actually gonna go over the data and if you log in, you're gonna have an opportunity to explore it before you download all of the information. This third tab though, I think is gonna be the most important one for you. So in Kaggle, you can host Jupyter Notebooks, essentially a very fancy way of showing off some of your Python code and it's great for data science and data exploration. Here's a list of people that have shared their Jupyter Notebooks, but I wanna call your attention to this first one right here, this notebook 05438. So in this notebook, like I said, it's a Jupyter notebook. You can see the Python code that people are using to investigate data sets and understand how to uh, manipulate the data in a way that will help them achieve the flag that they're looking for. So in this case, they have a couple pretty graphs and some tables. So here's a nice little box and, uh, box and whisker chart, a uh, couple line graphs, but what I always find interesting is when people start looking at histograms. Histograms are great for looking for patterns in data to see if there's any obvious outliers. Uh, here, I'm not too familiar with the data set, if I'm being honest. It's been a full year since I've played with this. But again, take a look at some of these examples, see how people are exploring the information. We can see that there's possibly an unbalanced data set, which we might need to take into account. And I really like this rainbow graph that they're actually doing based on the age ranges of people in the data set. So the next resource that I wanna point you to is actually one of my favorites. In fact, it is my favorite AI hacking tool, which is Adversarial Robustness Toolkit or ART. Um, ART is a list and collection of tools that researchers have put together for different ways to hack different machine learning systems. So it's not just limited to large language models. It goes more into traditional machine learning. So the Adversarial Robustness Toolkit, uh, there are some great examples that you can see in the notebooks directory, but two of my favorites that I wanna show you just to kind of get you interested in this is actually going to be the first one, which is Hop, Skip, Jump. So Hop, Skip, Jump attack is a way to fool AI image models into thinking a uh, first image is actually a second image. So for example, if I wanted to trick an AI model into thinking that a puppy is actually a kitty, this is the way that we would do it. I'm gonna scroll down about to the middle where we actually start to see some of the, uh, some of the changes here. So this is an example just using the uh, regular ImageNet weights and images. So ImageNet is just a way of classifying, I think there's about 100 or 1,000 different examples to 
of, of objects to classify. So it ranges from animals to vehicles. So is it a train? Is it a plane? Is it an automobile? Is it a koala? Is it a gibbon? Is it a panda bear? So in this case, they just randomly pick two images. So this is going to be a tractor, which is image label uh, 866. And actually, I got ahead of myself. So these are the two images. We have the koala, which is image 105, and we have the tractor 866. So what we're gonna try to do is make the tractor look like a koala, but still be classified as a tractor. So this is something that a human can look at and say like, oh, that's obviously a picture of a koala, but if we fool this machine learning AI system, it's gonna think that it's actually a tractor instead. So you can already think of some of the downstream implications of what can happen if somebody were able to do this. So I'm gonna scroll down to about the middle of the page where this whole process started. They go over four different examples that still kind of result in the same thing. Uh, so I'm just gonna show you the first one. So here we have our tractor, image label 866. And then we start to do this anamorphs thing where we kind of superimpose the koala image over the tractor and then as we continue to do iteration over iteration, we see that it looks less like a tractor, but more like a koala, and it's still that image label 866. So by the time we get to the end of this, and we finish all of our iterations, it looks indistinguishable from the original koala picture, but the machine learning model itself is still classifying it as that tractor, that label 866. So that's one of the reasons why I think hop, skip, jump is incredibly powerful and super cool to look at. The other one that I wanna point your attention to is actually a model inversion. So if you have an image classifier, in this case they're using MNIST, so it's just handwritten digits. So you have an image classifier and you wanna know what kinds of images or what kinds of features in those images the model is geared to look at. So in this case, what they do is they start with four examples. They have white, gray, black, and random. And so we're gonna look at each of the examples. So it starts with just a, a gray box and then it slowly turns on different pixels to see how the different weights in the model are activated and to see if it gets closer or closer to a specific type of class. So in this case, MNIST, there's 10 classes, right? Zero through nine. And so, it's checking each class and it's kind of modifying those pixels in order to figure out what kind of image it's supposed to be classifying. So it's expecting me to put in a, a handwritten digit of a zero. It's going to look like a handwritten digit of a zero. So they do all four, right? White, black, gray, and random, just to see which ones turn out to be the best. So in this case, this is gray. It, kind of looks a little legible. You can kind of make out what it is, but if you didn't know that these were supposed to be handwritten digits, it would be a little unclear as to what they're supposed to be. Uh, we can see black looks a little bit more like an ultrasound, a lot harder to read. Random is the hardest to read. And then the one that seems to be the most legible and the one that we're gonna get the most value out of is just this white. So. We don't know which one is going to be uh, the best, so that's why we try all four. But I just think this is super cool, and they have notebooks and examples on how to use all these different attacks. Actually, if I go to notebooks, you can see a list of all the different types of attacks that can be done within the Adversarial Robustness Toolkit. So take a look at that if you ever run into a machine learning system or a traditional machine learning system that you need to try and break into. So next, I want to show you the Microsoft on how to plan a red team for AI, uh, and specifically large language model applications. Now, this is really important because ever since ChatGPT came onto the scene, a lot of security teams have been kind of struggling to figure out how to manage their cybersecurity programs when it comes to large language models. And especially for companies that are fine tuning or developing large language model applications, it's not entirely clear how to actually begin testing if you're not already familiar with data science. Um, so what I like about this is it's fairly high level 
if this is your first introduction to any sort of AI or machine learning uh, red team kind of concept, this is gonna get you started from the very beginning, right? So they start with what is a red team, uh, why you wanna do some AI red teaming, it goes into uh, before you start testing, how to plan a red team event, what to test, how to test, how to record the data, and the things that you should be doing during your tests as part of the assessment, right? There's no OWASP top 10 for machine learning, at least the list that they have right now for machine learning, uh, it hasn't been updated in quite a while, and I think the project's kind of been abandoned. Uh, however, there is a OWASP top 10 list for large language model applications, which I was a core contributor to on version 1.0 last year. Um, and so I do recommend taking a look at that to kind of get an idea of how a uh, more centered red team approach kind of meshes with that OWASP top 10 list. Again, it's enough to get you started. So take a look at that when you get a chance. The other one that I highly recommend is actually the NVIDIA's AI Red Team. This is gonna be an introduction to AI Red Teaming. What's great about this is that it's written by Will Pierce and Joe Lucas. Will Pierce and Joe Lucas are actually the ones that tend to put on the AI Village capture the flag events. So if you know there's anything that's gonna be in there that you're gonna to wanna to look out for, it's gonna be in this kind of blog post. Now, this one goes over more traditional machine learning and machine learning red team. And what I really appreciate about it is that it goes over uh, how machine learning systems are built and designed. So this is a lot of, you know, inside baseball and behind the curtain as far as how things are developed and where some of those flaws might be. So a couple key highlights is gonna be assessment foundations. How does AI red teaming kind of fit into the core of a machine learning security program? Then it goes over the machine learning development process. If you've seen some of my other videos on machine learning, uh, it covers the same seven step process, right? So you start with ideation, then you get into data collection, data processing, model training, model evaluation, model deployment, and then you continuously monitor the system and iterate. So you go back through the data collection process and redevelop your models. So that's how traditional machine learning systems are designed and developed. Uh, it goes over then the methodology and use cases. So what I like about this, the rest of the blog post completely covers a high level methodology of how to approach a machine learning system if you're in your environment trying to uh, perform a red team or a penetration test or any sort of adversarial examples, what that looks like. Okay, so my camera just shut off, so sorry about that, but let's get going. Uh, Take a look at these two blog posts if you get a chance. The next thing that I want to focus your attention on is actually this paper, the Universal and Transferable Adversarial Attacks on Aligned Language Models. So for the generative red team, I really recommend this paper. Basically what they did was take a lot of open source large language models, uh, do a lot of technical analysis on those and develop a lot of uh, statistical techniques that you can use for prompt injection. And then that is going to be used to attack some of the closed source models. So think Gemini, OpenAI, and Claude. This paper is actually what led a number of people to get into the finals for last year's generative AI event. Uh, now, there's nothing that I'm saying that isn't already public knowledge, but while I do recommend this paper, it's already a year old. And so there's been a lot of changes to some of those more closed source models. Uh, so it'll still get you started in a really good spot and kind of give you some ideas on how to think about breaking into or manipulating large language model applications. And then of course, finally, the last thing that I'm gonna to point to is actually gonna be my own video. Uh, the Cyberpunk's Guide to Attacking Generative AI. So in here, I go over the entire kill chain of how to attack generative AI and large language model applications. And a lot of it's based off of the OWASP top 10, which is something that I had heavily contributed to as well. Uh, in here, I also have in the description a GitHub that covers uh, pretty much everybody that you need to follow and LLM security frameworks if you wanna learn a lot more about large language model security specifically. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. For more information, again, everything that I just went over is gonna be in the links in the description down below. 
So make sure that you take a look at those. And if you're going to be at DEF CON, stop by the village and say hi to me. It'll be really nice to see you in person. With that, have a good day.